Alrighty guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Uh, this is Indy 101 with SoCal. Uh, industry is quite a big topic to cover, so this is just gonna kinda cover the basics um, and give you guys kind of an idea where to start and what you should be looking for. Uh, to start off with, um, a little bit about me. So I've been in wormholes for the last couple of years, just recently moved out to Nullsec. Um, I primarily made my money doing T3 production, which is the Tengus and Lokis, and stuff like that. Um, and I also did a bit of ratting. So, hopping over to the presentation, yes, I actually made a PowerPoint. Uh, so what skills do you need? So, there's a lot of skills associated with industry. Um, the bare minimum is Industry 1 and that'll let you make some of the T1 stuff and let you build modules and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, a lot of the other skills like mass production, uh, mass reactions, all that other stuff and adds on to kind of the slots you have. Um, other skills such as scientific networking and remote reactions increase the range in which you can interact with those slots. Um, a lot of those skills you're going to want to train up as time goes on, but if you take a look at the skill itself, so if you do right click and then show info, it'll give you a lot more information about what it actually does and you'll be able to kind of prioritize from there. Uh, so that being said, for the minimum, minimum skills is going to depend on what you're trying to make. Uh, like I said, just one in industry will let you build a lot of the T1 ships and modules and stuff like that. If you're looking for T2 production or T3 or anything more advanced, you're going to need higher skills. Uh, a lot of those ships, if you right click on them and do show info, will have those skill requirements. Stations. So, not all stations have the ability to manufacture and research items. Um, so how do you find these stations? Well, if you go to any station in EVE, you know, let's pop over to EVE real quick, you have this industry button. And if you click on this industry button, it'll pop up something similar to this. Now, even if it's grayed out, you can still click on the industry button and see this. Now, if you go to facilities right here, you can see all the stations within five jumps, within 10 jumps, within the current region, and you can see what they actually do. Now, all of these are gonna be manufacturing, all of these are gonna be BPO research, and then these are gonna be invention. Uh, inventions for T2, which we won't actually cover in this class, but it's good to know anyway. And then, obviously, reactions is gonna be the last one. That's the different roles. So taxes, depending on which station you're using, the taxes will differ. So if we pop back over to Eve, uh, and we go to blueprints, you can see here I have an executioner blueprint. If I start this job duration and total job cost, these will all change based on the facilities tax. Uh, the facilities tax is set by the owner of the station itself. Now, currently I'm in an NPC station on this character, but if you're in Quarius, um, all of those are going to be set by whoever owns that station. And then research and manufacturing slots. So I'm going to pop back over again. Uh, you can see I currently have zero out of five science jobs in queue. Now, as your skills progress, these will go up. So you have your science jobs, which are used for researching and inventing blueprints or copying blueprints. Uh, you have your manufacturing jobs, which is used for making ships and stuff like that. And then you have your reaction jobs, which is obviously used for creating reactions. Blueprints. Now, blueprints are a little tricky. Uh, there's a couple ways to get them. The most common way, I would say, is off the contract market or 
off of buying a BPO and then copying it. Uh, a lot of places, including Corius, will have BPCs, which are blueprint copies. Now, these blueprint copies are what you're actually going to use to make your ships and stuff like that, but they have a limited, limited amount of runs. So, like we see here, this executioner blueprint has one run remaining. After that one run, it disappears and it's gone for good. Now, on the other hand, we see this Kestrel blueprint I have here, and I can actually copy this because it's a BPO, and this essentially has infinite runs. So I can use this as much as I want, and it never runs out. Now, that being said, the BPOs are significantly more expensive. So if you're going to be manufacturing a certain chip a lot, the BPO may be an investment for you. If not, it may not be. Um, sometimes these blueprints are, or the BPCs are very cheap, and it's worth you actually just picking up the BPCs instead of spending the time to research these blueprints. Uh, another thing about these BPOs is you'll notice here we have material efficiency research, time efficiency efficiency research and copying. So if we go to material efficiency research, and this is a frigate, so this is the lowest. If we go to the max, which is 10, it takes 42 days to max out that blueprint. That means I have to spend 42 days in the queue before the material is maxed out. And it's not too much better with the time. Uh, if we go over here to the time, it's exactly the same. It's 42 days, 19 hours. And then I will have a perfect BPO for a Kestrel. Uh, and this is a frigate, so they go up as the classes do. So destroyers will be more, cruisers will be more, etc, etc. So it's important to keep in, time, keep in mind the time aspect. Alright, so cost versus reward. So... Like I was saying, if you're going to be producing a ship, say you want to make Vexers, and you want to supply the ratting ships for all of Brave, uh, a BPO may be something you look to get into, um, but it's going to take a significant amount of time. You're not going to be able to just start it up immediately and start making money. That's, that's not really the way industry works. Um, so keep that in mind as you're looking at it. Now, it's never a bad thing to have extra BPOs. So if you decide that you want to make Kestrels, for example, and you decide later, you know, Kestrels aren't really my thing, you still have that researched BPO. And certain players will buy that for a significant amount of ISK if you have already researched it and put in the time. So you're not losing money per se, uh, and it's definitely value added. But just try and keep in line with what you're actually trying to make. Now resources. Resources get a little tricky because of recent changes, not all ore is available everywhere. And if we look at any T1 manufacturing, we're going to need pretty much all kinds of ore. Um, this kind of gives you a general idea here on the screen. But realistically, in Nullsec, we're looking at the higher end ore, while on the flip side, Tritanium and stuff like that is going to be in high sec. Um, depending on what you're making, you may decide to buy the ore rather than mine it yourself, and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, a lot of people use different tools to kind of calculate that, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but the other thing you can do is you can reach out to people inside Brave and just kind of see who's selling this stuff and try and pick it up from them. All right, manufacturing. So, if I park back over here, and I can't actually manufacture from the station, but if I were to, I had this blueprint, and I click on manufacturing, and I can see everything it takes for me to make this ship. Now, once I start this, the job duration is about an hour, and this will change per ship, and then I will have my Kestrel. Now, it's important to keep in mind that market tax, station tax, all of these extra costs end up adding up. So you want to kind of do the math or try and 
get a good spreadsheet going uh, before you start building this stuff. But you will need all of the materials in the station where you have the blueprint. So if I had all these materials in this station, I could make this blueprint. M E and T E. So M E and T E is material efficiency and time efficiency. These are those two things that we're going to take absurdly long um, when we're looking at these blueprints. Now, material efficiency is the materials it takes to build the ship, so you can actually make this smaller, which will end up saving you money. And time efficiency, obviously, is time. So this is how long it takes to actually make it. You want to research that as well. All right, reactions. Now we're going to briefly touch on reactions. We're not going to go too deep into this because reactions is more of a not advanced thing, but it's usually used in more T2 stuff. But in addition to ships, there's also reactions. So a reaction blueprint would take something like moon goo and combine those and make it into something else. Now these reactions are used for T2 production. They're also used for drugs and stuff like that if you do gas har harvesting. Um, the reactions are also used for T3 production, which is going to be, again, gas and stuff like that. Um, as you do these reactions, sometimes reactions by themselves are profitable enough where people don't actually make the ships. They just react the gas or react the moon goo and then sell that. Um, it's definitely something to work, look into. Um, and if you have any questions about that, go ahead and please feel free to reach out. I will be doing a Industry 102 class at some point, um, and we'll cover T2 and T3 production at that time. Alright, now to the almighty tools. What tools can you use for industry? There is a lot. Uh, I could spend just as much time on tools as I could just about anything else, but I'll try and skip through this pretty quick. So, spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are going to be the number one. Uh, everyone jokes about Eve being spreadsheets in space, and this industry is probably the main reason why. Um, Everything you use to create, say even T1 ships, you can use um, all sorts of different fields and combine them and make crazy epic spreadsheets out of just about all of them. Um, and keeping track of all that data gets extremely, extremely difficult. Um, so, give me one second. I am pulling up my spreadsheet here. All right, so this is my spreadsheet, and this just generally calculates uh, everything you need to make a ship and if it's profitable or not. Now, right now, Eve Prazel is currently having issues, as you can see, so some of this stuff isn't loading just yet. But if we take a look here, you can see this is everything you need to make a paladin right here and if you gather it obviously it'll cut it off from there and then if you buy it the cost and everything goes down there now t2 is a little more extensive and you start talking about making the t2 components and everything kind of builds and builds and builds and it gets kind of crazy so it's very easy to lose track of where you're at with some of this stuff especially if you have stockpiles of this stuff so definitely i recommend checking out um, certain people's spreadsheets or building your own uh, for bpcs there is a bpc program for brave the link is right here and if you go ahead and message me i can go ahead and give you the link to that um, this is something i just found about recently so i can't speak too much about it but it's definitely a resource for you to use. Um, if you did not know, and for all of you who are forgetful like me, I will make this super awesome list of everything I need to buy and completely forget it, it exists. So if you go to Utilities and then Notepad, 
you can actually create notes here for shopping lists or anything like that. That way, when you get to those stations where you're buying everything, you can just kind of copy paste from here and you can do the multi buy and all that other good stuff. Fuzzwork. Fuzzwork is an awesome site for checking out BPOs. So if we hop in here, if we're looking for anything, um, let's say we're looking for the mana core. We could pop in here and we could see how much is needed for this ship. Now this goes for any blueprint in the game. So you can see just what resources are needed. Um, you can come in here and actually change the ME and TE based on your actual skills and how much the blueprint is actually researched and you'll see the actual job quantity. You'll also see the prices and stuff like that here too. So this is an, another excellent resource for you to use. Eve Prazel. Eve Prazel is also another excellent resource um, this essentially gives you access to all the market data. So when you're trying to figure out what you should build, um, and that's sometimes very difficult, even for me as an experienced player, um, it's important to look at the market data. Uh, you could see if, you know, a certain ship is at a low point right now and it's worth actually building and selling, or if the market's just oversaturated and there's too many of them and it's, you know, you don't actually want to sell it because everyone and their mother is selling this ship. Uh, it's a little more difficult for Quarius, but you can still go in game and check out the market in Quarius and see what's selling right now, how many are up, and kind of judge and determine based on that. If you're not sure what to make, um, it's always a safe bet to make ammo. And a lot of people will start out making T1 ammo and sell that just as an intro to empty and that is never a bad thing because ammo is one of those things that's never in short supply the market may be oversaturated with it but we always use ammo just as fast as we get it and then the last tool that i'm going to mention here is going to be slack and friends so slack is a great place to reach out to other indie bros there's an indie bro uh, channel inside slack and reaching out to people in there and friends in game and all of that good stuff a lot of people will be able to give you a lot of good information on what you should be looking for and kind of what to build as well um, if you have any questions you can always reach out to myself as well and with that is there any questions Mic off. Mic on. Mic off. Mic on. Mic off. Mic on. Okay, so what if you don't know what to build? So if you don't know what to build, like I was saying, T1 ammo is always a go-to. Um, talking to your friends in EVE, inside Brave, um, inside Slack, all of that good stuff, and a lot of people will be able to give you good advice. Uh, what to build is a difficult question because it always changes. Now, in Aquarius right now, obviously, we're using a lot of um, I'm forgetting the word, but ships that we typically use. Um, so those are a pretty safe bet. But if the market's oversaturated, which means that there's too many ships up there for that specific type, it may not be worth you selling those. Um, same thing kind of goes with modules. You can also look on the market and see if 
there's certain modules that no one's selling right now. And if that's the case, that's a pretty safe market to get into as well, especially if it's something we use for our doctrine chips, uh, because those will be picked up very, very quickly. Mic off. Mic on. Okay, so the question was, where's the best place to get BPOs? So BPOs, typically I buy them from Cheetah. Uh, but you may find them on contract for cheaper. Uh, BPOs versus BPCs. BPCs cannot actually be on the market. Um, so you won't see any of those up there, but you will see them on contract. So if you're looking for the best prices for BPOs, typically I buy them from Jita, but once you have one, you really, you're pretty set. Mic off. Mic on. All right. So the next question was, how do you keep up with all the manufacturing slots? So because it's kind of a time to wait thing, um, a lot of your time after you get your industry set up, it'll be pretty much click, clicking accept and then clicking collect. So kind of a really passive game. Um, if you're mining and actually gathering resources yourself, obviously that'll kind of play into it. But if you're just buying the materials and creating stuff, uh, it's really easy to kind of almost passively do industry. Um, but it's important to keep in mind the ISK aspect of it. So if you want to be the most, you want to make the most ISK doing this, uh, you really got to look at the numbers. So spreadsheets will definitely help you there. Mic off. Mic on. All right, so skills for an alpha. So what skills as an alpha do you need to do industry? So that one is gonna be, again, kind of going back to the original slide up here um, the really only skill you actually absolutely have to have is industry one um, I'm not 100% sure on which skills alphas can or can't train but if you right click on them and do show info it'll kind of tell you what they're about and as you progress through industry you'll kind of pick up and slowly progress just about all of these um, I personally have just about all of these two, four, or five, just over the years. My golf. My on. Okay, so where should you do industry? Um, the where is more going to be specific to you, so. A lot of people do industry inside Nullsec, and they gather stuff up there and ship stuff out, um, or they buy stuff off the market and build stuff inside our homes, home stations. Um, other people may do it in high sec. It's it's really kind of specific to you, and where you want to store all that stuff, and where you want to build all that stuff. Uh, for me personally. What I'm doing right now is I'm mining ore outside of HiSec and NullSec, and I'm shipping everything out to our home stations in NullSec. Mic off. Mic on. Alrighty, any more questions, any more comments, concerns, anything like that? Mic off.
mic on. Alrighty, cool. And with that, I will give you guys back the rest of your day. Uh, pretty quick class here. If you guys got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you want uh, access to my indie spreadsheet, please check out Indie Bros channel in Slack. Thanks, guys, and have a good night.